fighting surrounding the upcoming fight between uh, Buster Douglas and Evander Holyfield is over. The fight is now set. It is official. The announcement was made in New York yesterday. They will meet uh, the first defense as a heavyweight champ for Buster Douglas. It's set for October 25th. And on the scene in New York for this report is Michael Marley. They're calling this one James Buster Douglas defending his undisputed heavyweight title against Evander Holyfield. The nickname is the moment of truth. Just think of it, truth and boxing in the same sentence? It can only happen in America, as Don King might say. But that's the name of this fight. You remember the thrill in Manila, Ali Frazier 3. Ali Foreman, that was the rumble in the jungle. Now October 25th comes the moment of truth. The moment of truth for the champion, Buster Douglas, and the top-rated undefeated challenger, Evander Holyfield. I'm looking to fight Buster at his best. His Buster's not at his best, and that's on Buster. But I feel that uh, when I train for each and their opponent, I, I look to fight them at their best, whereas there's no excuse. I don't look for Buster to have a bad night for me to be the winner. I look for Buster to have a great night, and I, and I will still be the winner. I have to say that, you know, Vanders, you know, he's a, he's a nice size heavyweight, you know, uh, and a guy with a strong will. You know, someone had asked, have we fought guys uh, in comparison to one another? I said, well, I'm sure I have fought somebody or sparred with somebody, but it's not a Vanders, so I can't bear, you know, have a, have a, have a uh, rating on that because he's a different man. He has different wheels in there. So I, I, I'm, uh, you know, looking at a Vander Holyfield, a person. You know, and I think that I have the ability to, you know, take him out. I feel that when it's come down to, uh, I think, I feel that the competitive part of me is always to win, but I feel that for its ability, I feel that I have just as much as ability, and I feel that when it comes down to heart, I feel that I, I have what it takes. Yeah, it's been a change because I enjoy being heavyweight champion. And uh, reflecting back on it is, is something that I see that I can be around for a long time. I can be around as long as James Douglas wants to be. I'm a good fighter as well, and I feel that when it comes down to the clinches, uh, uh, deep down inside, I believe I can make Buster quit. Can, can you understand why you're the underdog and why you say some people are still leery? Is that because they don't know which is the real Buster Douglas, the guy that demolished Tyson, well, they don't, or the guy from before? They don't know me, and you know, you guys have been caught up in that, that, uh, that, uh, you know, uh, that neon where it's been, you know, total domination. You know, if a guy doesn't totally dominate a guy, then you know, well, he's a. Uh, uh, now it's a different era. Okay. It's the '90s, baby. <laughs> the heavyweight hype has only just begun. There's a long way from now until October 25th and the moment of truth. For the USA Network, this is Michael Marley reporting. Sean O'Grady, if you were the odds maker, uh, how would you pick that fight? Well, for that fight, you know, Evander Holyfield has never really faced any great big heavy lights like Buster Douglas is. And I have to give Buster Douglas a little bit of an advantage. Even though Evander Holyfield is a wonderful fighter, I still have to go with Buster. Good big man in boxing, 90% of the time will beat a good little man. Now, uh, waiting in the wings for the winner of that fight, uh, either Mike Tyson or George Foreman, that's if they don't fight one another. Next guest is the number one heavyweight contender. Take a look at this videotape here. His record is 24-0 with 20 knockouts, and he'll challenge Buster Douglas for the title on October 25th in Las Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Evander Holyfield. Oh. Thank, thank you very much for taking time out of your schedule to come here. Help me out with this. Now, were you originally scheduled to fight Tyson? Is that how this happened? Yes, um, it's Tyson win the fight. That's right. Fight. Uh, Buster Douglas won over in Tokyo. We all know about that. Of the two fighters, which would you, who would you rather face? The champ. It doesn't make any difference. Whoever has the title, you want to face him. It doesn't make a difference. Yeah, who, who would have been, uh, I don't know how to put this, because neither of them would be easy, but who would have been a better opponent for you? Tyson, uh, I feel, because of style. Really? Yeah, and are you worried about Buster Douglas? No, I'm not worried. I know that I have a tough job. Yeah. But um, I get the job done. Now, he, he was here, I guess, uh, shortly after... <laughs>
He, he was here shortly after he defeated uh, Tyson. He seemed like a very nice man. Have you guys met? Do you know one another? Well, I've seen him. we met. Yeah. And um, usually all the boxes are nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> does, does that present a problem for you when you're in the ring, or it just becomes an opponent who has something you want? Is that how that works? Well, there's no problem, because uh, a lot of my friends have fought for uh -huh. it, so um, it's just going out there taking care of business. Uh-huh. He. Uh... <laughs> Did you ever put anybody to sleep in your basement? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. You, uh, in, in addition to, to being a, uh, uh, a boxer, you, you have a car dealership? I have a Buick, Buick and Subaru back in that man. Too. Really? Now, how did you get into this? Was this just a good investment for you or something you were interested in? Well, my manager was a Buick dealer, and, uh -huh. um, and he just he wanted me to... Uh, I have something to do out the boxing. Well, that, you know, that's great. That's very smart. Do you enjoy that kind of stuff? Are you there? Are, are you on the f uh, showroom floor trying to close deals? <laughs> I'm there. I'm there when I'm not in training. And, uh, a lot of people do come in, and I do close a lot uh -huh. of deals. Now, do you do you yourself, have a, a, as your personal car, do you have a Buick or a Subaru? Buick. You, have, you actually have a Buick? Yes. Or what kind? Park Avenue. Park Avenue. Is that the top of the line of the Buicks? Riviera is the top yeah. of the line. Do you, do you like the Buick? Are you happy with it? Yeah, smooth riding car. <laughs> You and, and uh, I, I find this interesting also, you've been an executive producer of a motion picture, is that? Pretty much, yes. Um, Blood Savage. Blood Savage? Yes. And, and it was, it's like a, a horror film or something, right? Well, yes, it's a horror, but a comedy as well. Yeah. And, and how, how is it that you were interested in producing a motion picture? Most, most guys, when they're prize fighters, th that's all they focus on. But you have other interests. Well, actually, uh, my manager, uh, son, made the movie, so mm -hmm. um, that's why I was <laughs> able to get in on it. Uh, and, and do you have a part in the film as well? You're acting in the film? Well, I had a cameo appearance. Uh, I got a chance to hit somebody. <laughs> <laughs> a rare opportunity to turn somebody's lights out. Uh, and what are you doing now at this stage? And I see the fight is just about, what, is it six weeks away, five weeks away? Six to five. Yeah, and what are you doing now? What are you doing by way of training? Well, I'm practicing three times a day. Now, what does that consist of when you say you're practicing? What do you, you get up in the morning, you go to the gym? I, go, I get up in the morning, my first workout is the boxing where I shadow box. You shadow box for how long? Well, you have four or five rounds, then you spar about eight to ten rounds. Spar a day. with the uh, various guys, one yes, guy? Three guys. Three guys. And, and uh, how many rounds do you spar? You said eight or ten? Yeah. Eight now, that's a good workout, isn't it? Sure. And you're doing that every day? Every day. Well, no, what about? Well, five days a week. Yeah. Do you, do you do road work, get up and run or not? Well, we do that in the third workout. Mm -hmm. I have a weight workout, strengthening program, which is in the noon time by yeah. 3 o'clock. And, and where do you feel you are? are? Are you starting to peak? Have you just right peaking? Are you on the other side? Or, By the way, don't you hate it when people peak? I hate that. <laughs> anyway, um, but where, where are you physically? Are you... Actually, I'm uh, four, about four weeks away, four or five weeks away. Perfect. That's when the fight is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That was quite a shot. That was a powerful shot. You could feel the power in that one, couldn't you? Yeah, I could feel the one. Yeah, I know you could. Uh, geez, good luck to you. This is going to be really interesting because I think a lot of people, as nice a guy and as good a fighter as Buster Douglas is, I think a lot of fe people have the feeling that it was maybe he caught Tyson on a bad night or something. But he's a dangerous fighter, isn't he? Yes, uh, he did beat Tyson. You can't take that away from him. And uh, that's the reason they named the fight the Moment of Truth. Moment of Truth. That's right. right. Well, we're going to find out now just exactly where the whatever you find out. Uh, but good luck to you. And, you know, whenever I meet uh, you guys who are, who are always going after the championship, I, I always, you know, I think, well, geez, that's great. It would be nice if you won. And uh, it'll be quite a fight. Looking forward to seeing it. Thank, Thank you. you very much for being here. All right, we'll uh, do a commercial and be right back. Tonight, George Foreman will be meeting up with Terry Anderson. Big George now waiting for the dust to clear with the matchup between the heavyweight champ, Buster Douglas, and Evander Holyfield coming in Las Vegas on October 25th. Just a month away for the champion of the world making his first defense. It's been seven months since he shocked Mike Tyson and won the championship. He is now working out in Vegas and sat down one-on-one -on -one with Michael Marley. I'm James Buster Douglas. 
I'm the heavyweight champion because I knocked out Mike Tyson. Oh, what an uppercut from Douglas. Tyson's in deep trouble. Evander Holyfield thinks it was luck. He thinks he's the next champion. He's right about one thing. He's next. How about the negative side of being heavyweight champion? What, what's the downside of it? The pressure or the... the well, I'll tell you the truth, I'll tell you the truth, man. It's, it's not really, it's not really a downside. I, I, I'm not even going to knock it. Because I think it's the best thing in the world, you know. It's a, it's a blessing. I, uh, you know, feel in my heart that, uh, you know, it's just a A1 position, you know. I wouldn't want to change this seat, you know, with anyone. Holyfield's theory seems to be that he can absorb punishment from you until you either tire or just wear out. Can that possibly work? I, I think that's, uh, you know, I often, you know, reflect on that, and I say, well, that's, that's a losing battle, you know, to think that you can just be in the best shape of your life to where you can just endure excruciating pain, suffering, you know. Uh, it's just... Uh, it's just a far-fetched. You know, once the bell rings, when you start popping leather, I think he'll get a different perspective of it all. And then as the rounds, the bell keeps, and I keep, <laughs> you know, I think uh, he'll be, I don't think it's gonna work, fellas. Better pack it in, man. <laughs> you talk about possibly giving him a title shot uh, the next guy around after Evander. Uh, yeah, I want to be George's worst nightmare. Just like the man before me, <laughs> up in Zaire. Uh, you know, George, man, this is George's second time around. And when he was in his prime, he was in the top of the world. He was the heavyweight champion of the world. But I don't think he was uh, really uh, too used to being in the limelight. You know, it was a thing that he wanted to just be left alone and just come fight and be left alone. But now, you know, it's the second time around. George is a lot older a lot bigger, but he's a different man. If I had my way, which I think I, I do, I, I would uh, choose to fight George next. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm content. I'm, I'm in, uh, you know, I think everybody in the camp, you know, despite the <clears throat> things that have been written, uh, you know, are happy, you know. I mean, you know, because, they, you know, to be honest, you have to be. I mean, we're, you know, we're in the heavy, we're, I'm the heavyweight champion of the world. You know, we're, we're at the top of the game, uh, you know, and it's a thing of uh, accepting roles and, you know, going on with it. You know, it's, uh, things have changed a great deal since, uh, you know, last fight. So I'm, I'm happy, and I think uh, the people that are close to me are happy. Heavyweight champions are like United States presidents. They often grow in stature while in office. Lately, the focus has been on Buster Douglas's waistline, but what's on his mind may be far more important. From Las Vegas, this is Michael Marley reporting for the USA Network. A month away from the fight, and Sean, you have a very uh, definitive feel about this matchup of Douglas versus Holyfield. Well, I believe that Evander Holyfield is a wonderful fighter. But I think he's going to realize in this fight how really big Buster Douglas is. And 90% of the time in boxing, a big, wonderful fighter will beat a, bi a little wonderful fighter. And I think that's what's going to happen in this fight. Much interest, of course, on that fight. Uh, no one more interested than the guy we'll be seeing uh, shortly in George Foreman. And George uh, quoted here in the English press, uh, taking his shots already at, at Buster Douglas, calling him the chairman of the board, B O R. E.D. saying that uh, they should sell Buster Douglas's picture to the medical profession as a cure to insomnia. So you know George now is thinking about Buster Douglas taking some shots at him. And that's not the only place that he's thinking of Buster Douglas. That is why now he's fighting people like Terry Anderson, who is six foot three. That's why he's fighting the Ken Lacusta, six foot two and a half. He's trying to get the range. Remember all the all the uh, cruiserweights that he was fighting had ballooned up to the heavyweight. He was trying to keep the range of Mike Tyson in mind. Now he's realigned his thinking, and he's trying to keep Buster Douglas in line. And uh, George uh, not getting any younger uh, at this point. No deals have been struck with either Douglas or Holyfield. Well, nothing's actually been made yet. They uh, have had some negotiations about some fights. 
uh, with the winner of the Evander Holyfield Douglas fight. But they're they're talking about uh, having those fights next year. Next year, George Foreman will be then 43. His age keeps getting older and older as we all. We begin this edition of Media Review with a look at boxing. Last February in Tokyo, a relative unknown named James Buster Douglas set the boxing world on its ear with a devastating 10th round knockout of the seemingly unbeatable champion Mike Tyson. Since then, the question everyone has been asking is, is Buster Douglas for real? Well, with all the legal difficulties finally resolved, it's time to find out. On October 25th at the Mirage Hotel in Las Vegas, Douglas will defend his title against the number one contender, undefeated Evander Holyfield. Before the battle takes place, however, there's another war going on between the two men in the media. This is a time in boxing when pre-fight hype is every bit as important and sometimes more eventful than the fight itself. Big paydays mandate big audiences, and to get them, the promoters of this fight have to put together some very compelling ads using boxing's classic challenge and answer style, made famous by Frazier Ali in the 1960s. For two years, I waited for Mike Tyson. Then Buster Douglas come out of nowhere and flatten him. They said Buster got a good left jab and a big right hand, and that would made him the champ. I said it was luck. We'll see. And the champ's response? I'm James Buster Douglas. I'm the heavyweight champion of the world because I knocked out Mike Tyson. Some people said it was luck. Oh, what an uppercut from Douglas. Tyson's in deep trouble. The luck cross. It puts him on the canvas. He may not get up. It wasn't luck. It's my job to hit people. I hit them harder than they hit me. It takes a lot of hard work and a lot of pain. But I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid of anything. You saw what I did to Mike Tyson. Evander Holyfield thinks he can do the same to me. He thinks he's the next champion. He's right about one thing. He's next. Douglas versus Holyfield for the heavyweight title. It's the moment of truth. And the truth is going to hurt. The winner? Well, at this point, it looks like it's fight promoter Steve Wynn. That's because he's the one selling the tickets. Boxing world with his dethroning of champion Mike Tyson in Tokyo. Well, this Thursday night, Douglas puts the heavyweight championship on the line against the number one contender, Evander Holyfield. Promoters are billing it as the moment of truth. And for Evander Holyfield, he says the moment is his. My intent is to go out and win and to do anything that possible to win as long as it's fair. And there's no hate in me and I realize that Buster has achieved a gold in life and he's a heavyweight champion of the world. And I feel that everybody has their day and I just feel that my day is October 25th and I'd be out there to prove that October 25th will be my day. I think my skills are far more greater than Evander's and uh, my shape is in, I'm in tremendous shape. I feel real good, and I'm, uh, like I said before, I'm very confident. Uh, and I think that uh, when it comes down to the two best athletes that are in the best shape, the one with the best skills are going to win. So therefore, I should be the victor. Well, you can join us right here on SNN for live coverage of the moment of truth. We also will bring you the weigh-in live as it occurs Wednesday, the 24th of October months since James Buster Douglas shocked the boxing world with his dethroning of heavyweight champion Mike Tyson in Tokyo. This Thursday night, Douglas puts the heavyweight championship on the line against the number one contender, Evander Holyfield. Promoters are billing it as the moment of truth. And as you saw earlier today here on SNN, both fighters are ready. So too the guys in their corner, like Lou Duva in the Holyfield camp. I'm predicting that he's going to win this fight in real good fashion. I, you know, when you talk about knockouts, you talk about decisions. Don't underrate him. We know, anyway. Buster Douglas. Buster Douglas is a good fighter. We don't take anything into consideration that they uh, come up with uh, phony reports out of the Mirage that he weighs 260 or 270. I think, really, it is an injustice to Buster. Passing out the chair room, he's 260, 270. He's not training. Hell, I've been in this business 40 years. This guy's a good fighter. SNN takes you up 
close for the moment of truth, our continuing coverage of the sweet science. The fight, of course, Thursday, October 25th, our weigh-in coverage Wednesday the 24th from the Mirage Hotel. Everybody by now knows the incident, the occurrence over in Tokyo. But what few people know is what you felt the very moment you hit Mike Tyson with the left, he went down to the canvas, and the very moment you knew he wasn't getting back up to fight again. What was going through your mind? I was totally relieved. I was just relieved of the fact that the war was over. And I came to do a job and I succeeded and I was very happy. Anything else uh, as you, as it really began to sink in later in the day, what had actually happened, what you had done? Well, I know I surprised a lot of people. I know a lot of people were surprised at the fact that I not only beat him, I knocked him out. Um, and um, it, was, uh, it was a thrilling moment for me and the camp and the family. It was hard work. As you look back, at yourself then. What was the major difference in Buster Douglas that afternoon in Tokyo and the Buster Douglas that had entered the ring the 32, 33 times before that? Well, there was a, a difference in uh, you know, the way things had all came about. Uh, I think the, the real, uh, the major difference was, uh, was my, and back in uh, July 20th, 1989, my total acceptance of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think that was the biggest impact that had totally brought everything together. It was always something that was missing. It was a missing link. And I wasn't ever for sure exactly, you know, what it was. I thought it was, you know, physical, mental. It made it seem as though the things that were bothering me most that I seemed to have been mountains were just molehills. And through that experience, I was able to see things for what they really were and put it all together. You told me before the fight that uh, once you'd made that acceptance of the Lord Jesus Christ into your life that the devil would really come hard after you. And you must have felt like that same thing was happening right after the fight because you had lawsuits from this guy, counter lawsuits, king and court, that you were in limbo for a little while. What, what, how did that make you feel having all those, uh, all that litigation? Through it all, it just exposed uh, certain parties uh, involved of just how they really are, you know, with all the uh, allegations and, and, and things that had went on leading up to the court case. Coming up to this fight, Evander, here's a guy that uh, some people call him a bulked up light heavyweight, but he's always in shape. And here you are, reports say you got up to 260, 265, and you got to get down. Did that ever, did, does it ever worry you in any way that you wouldn't be in the peak shape by fight time? Uh, you know, I, you know, I always have a worry, you know, that, that I wouldn't be ready to fight in any fight. But, uh, you know, I kind of got a kick out of it in a sense as my weight went down. Uh, because of the fact that, you know, I was noticing how they were paying more attention to me. But, you know, naturally, you know, being a heavyweight champion, they're going to want to know exactly the whereabouts and what, and what you were doing. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I worry about each and every fight. You know, it's a, it's a natural thing. It keeps me on edge. It keeps me, it keeps the intensity going. Describe in as, as detailed a way as possible why, above all else, you will beat Evander Holyfield come Thursday night, October 25th. I think our skills are far better. You know, I'm just a better man. Uh, and I'm a true uh, uh, heavyweight, you know, and, uh, and I will come to fight. You know, I'm the champion now, and uh, it's going to have to take a tremendous beating to uh, obtain this title. You talked about uh, maybe having two more fights after you beat Tyson. Is that still the plan? Are you going to have this one and another one and then get out of this? No, I think I'm going to be around for a while. I enjoy being heavyweight champion, and uh, I think I have the ability to, to maintain it. 
Want to remind you, we're going to be live throughout the week, 7 at 11.30 Eastern Time on SportsCenter. Tomorrow night on the 11.30 show, Evander Holyfield joins us live. Tuesday night, James Buster Douglas joins us live. On the 7 o'clock show Wednesday night, we will have the weigh-in live. Ray Leonard joins our commentary team at that time. And, of course, on Thursday night, immediately after the fight, instant analysis, highlights, and interviews. For now, Charlie Steiner at the Mirage in Las Vegas. Sports Center continues in just a couple of minutes with more highlights from around the NFL on this Sunday. Douglas versus Holyfield. That's what comes up on Thursday night. And the odds have uh, Holyfield as the favorite. But you talk to the boxing people around here, and the name Douglas seems to come up first. Well, a lot of the boxing people are favoring Douglas, and I tend to seem to, to feel the same way. I like the heavyweight uh, rank of Douglas. He is a big heavyweight. And I think that Holyfield is going to find out what it is to be in with a great big heavyweight. He's never really faced anyone as heavy as James Buster Douglas. For that reason, I give the, the edge to, uh, to Douglas. But I tell you, Holyfield is a wonderful fighter. Uh, and you look back over the history of time in boxing, the really super fighters in that heavyweight division have weighed round about 210. Ali was 212. Uh, Lewis was round about 210. Even uh, Rocky Marciano was 185 pounds, so they've uh, gone for the smaller fighters. Well, if you dust off that uh, O'Grady crystal ball for this one, how do you see this fight going? Well, I see a distance fight in uh, the, the Holyfield-Douglas fight. I think uh, that Douglas will be able to control it with his left jab. I do not believe that we're going to see a knockout, and if we do, I think it'll come from B James Buster Douglas. Holyfield hasn't really knocked out a big heavyweight. In this corner, Sean O'Grady with the prediction of Douglas retaining the heavyweight championship of the world.